thanks for coming, everybody, to my talk. Uh, sorry about the technical issues, but we should be good to go now. Uh, my talk today is going to be on a super cool programming language called NIM. And I've been using it in my day job and in my CTFs um, to build some red team tools that have been pretty effective in bypassing antivirus and EDR solutions and being pretty sneaky at the same time. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Aaron Haymore. I graduated from Enzyme College um, with my associates about two years ago, and I'm currently going to Western Governors University. I'm an application security engineer and red teamer for Merrick Bank and Cardwork Servicing. Um, we test our internal apps, and we also do our AD red teaming and all the hacking stuff. So I want to talk a little bit about NIM and what it is. Um, one of the things that drew me to NIM was that you can write your code and you can compile it for Linux or Windows. And that same code, when you compile it, it will run on both systems. So you don't have to worry about, you know, changing up things or, you know, this or that. You compile it and it runs and it works, which is super helpful when it comes to building red team tools because, you know, you can write your scripts out and then compile it and, you know, depending on what machine you come across, you can run it. Um, and another cool thing is before it's compiled, it's converted to C, so it's super low level. Um, according to the author, it's designed to be efficient, expressive, and elegant. It's super easy to read. Um, it's very similar to Python, so it's really easy to pick up and learn and read uh, compared to other languages. And right now it's got a pretty small community, so if you compare it to like a Metasploit payload, every single antivirus is going to pick that up. Um, versus you have this small community of people writing in a super obscure language, not many antiviruses are going to pick it up. So kind of all these things combined make it perfect for uh, a building red team tools in. You don't have antivirus picking it up. It's easy to write in. You can cross compile. Um, so it's, it's great. I, I saw this forum post um, on the NIM forum. And this person was asking how they can create a function pointer to execute shellcode. <laughs> and the author of NIM, he says, please don't write your malware in NIM. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. So in my talk, I'm going to be talking, I'm going to go over some reverse shells, doing some process injection, and then showing off a, cool, a few more cool things that you can do with it. Um, to get you a little bit familiar with the syntax and how truly how easy NIM is, um, this is your standard hello world. You just echo hello world, hello St. Con. Um, and that's, that's your entire program so far. This is showing off the compiler. Um, I compiled everything just on an Ubuntu machine. You specify NIM, the C is for compile, and then whatever file you have so you can see it runs through um, and it successfully compiles. And then when you run the executable, you just get hello world. So that same code, this is demonstrating the, the cool cross-compilation. I've got a few more flags here um, for, to make it work on Windows, but it's the same thing. And then here, I, just, I hosted the file um, just on an HTTP server and downloaded it with curl. And then when you execute it, you get hello sync on. So it's pretty cool. Uh, getting into some more malicious items, um, this is a pretty simple reverse shell that you can code. Um, and in about 24 lines of code minus white space, you can get uh, a working reverse shell. When I first was working on this maybe six months ago, um, I ran it against you know, the most updated Windows machine with all the cool EDR tools on it, and it just it went right through with no issues. Um, since then, it's been posted on GitHub, and it's got a little bit more traction, and antiviruses are starting to pick up on it, but with a little bit of obfuscation, it still, it still runs. So running through the code just a little bit, uh, the first couple lines are just imports. Um, I create a new variable called socket, create a new function called shell that takes in two parameters. Um, and in our case, it's the IP of our attacking machine and a port that we want to connect to. We then try to connect back to our Kali machine and it waits to receive input. So you know, this is where your command will come in. So if I type in who am I or dir or whatever, it'll pass that into 
uh, about halfway down, and it'll run the command and then send the output back to um, our machine. So just to demonstrate that a little bit, I compiled this code using the same thing as before, um, doing it for Windows. Transfer it over, and I execute the reverse shell. And back on my attacking machine, we can see that I get a connection back, and we can successfully you know, run commands and get a reverse shell. Pretty easy, pretty cool. Uh, like I mentioned, when I first started working on some NIN stuff, 100% went right by you know, those 24 lines of code. Um, but now, like I said, EDRs are starting to pick it up a little bit. But even just with a tiny bit of obfuscation, I'd ha I've had really good success with still um, bypassing AV. Uh, the next part I want to talk about is doing some cool process injection with the Windows API. Uh, there's a library out there for NIM that lets you interact with the Windows API. Uh, the structure of this code, it's, it's a little bit more complex than the other one, but it comes down to really four steps. We need some imports. We need to create a function that will actually make our APA, API calls start and suspend a process, and then we're going to actually make some, make some API calls that will start our thread, suspend it, and then inject our shellcode into it. So here's a few imports that we need. Those are those libraries I mentioned previously. Uh, this is a new function that's going to create our remote thread. Um, we're going to start a new process called Notepad and then we're going to suspend it and give ourselves access so we can actually act, uh, modify that process. Um, we're going to create some space in memory that we can write to. This is where our shell code is going to go. Um, we're going to take some shell code and write it into memory, and then it's going to create that remote thread. So this is the shell code that will be executed. It's just a Windows message box that's in C Sharp. I had to convert a little bit of the shell code to make it work within the array, but it's just changing a few numbers on the size of it and some brackets. So after it's compiled um, and transferred over to the machine, you can run it and you see we get you know a hello from MSF. So that's a pretty it's a little bit complex, but the code is really simple. It's, it's you know maybe 50 lines and you can inject shell code into a process. Another cool thing that I've been experimenting with NIM is using already existing tools with it. Um, there's a repo out there um, called Offensive NIM where there's tons of great templates that people have put together to uh, do different malicious things. And one of them is called execute, binary, execute assembly binary NIM. And what this will do is it'll load a C sharp um, executable and it will run it in memory. So first we have to transfer it into a byte array, and then the script will then run that all in memory. So I'll demonstrate that, that now. So I used the WinPs executable. It's a common privilege escalation tool that's used on Windows machines. It can get you different paths to system or pivoting or whatever you might need. So there's a script that I found um, that is in PowerShell and you load it in, and then you give it whatever input file you want. So I gave it WinPs, and then it will convert it to uh, a byte array that NIM can read. And then I, I commented out right here, array here, because the string is just so long, um, it would be a huge picture. So you just import the array right there, and then you compile it. This one's a little bit more, but it's just um, same thing as before. And then here, it's a little bit small, but at the top, I named the file w.exe. And it will then take that array, convert it back, and run WinPs in memory. There's a lot of other cool things that have been not done with NIM. There's key loggers. Uh, one of my coworkers wrote a, um, a script to bypass AMSI. Uh, you can do system calls, you can create an HTTP server and do requests, and somebody's even already made a C2 server with NIM already. Um, and a lot of these things, you know, they're starting to get picked up on by AV, but in, in my experience, I've had some pretty good success with um, building these tools in NIM and running them and having some pretty good success. Uh, these are the two resources that 
I really liked to use. Um, there's that GitHub repo. Um, it's offensive NIM. It's what I've referenced before. And then there's also another GitHub page there that has got tons of great things on NIM. So that's my presentation. Thanks. <laughs>